Good afternoon, dear friends. Welcome to uh, to uh, the uh, platform titled uh, Makot Language Tutor. Uh, I wish to welcome everybody. Uh, it's been a while. I've been uh, moving, running around the world doing all kinds of things, and I'm back today. And today, dear friends, we're going to be talking about a very interesting aspect of my mother tongue, and it's called uh, synonymy. Okay. It's called synonymy. What 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 is synonymy? Synonymy is a grammatical term that we use to refer to uh, the relationship between individual uh, meanings, individual significations, or if you if if you if you like uh, the uh, the individual senses of a particular word. Okay, in uh, most languages that uh, play the world. Uh, many words have other ways, other, other meanings, okay? And there are many ways of saying the same thing. I'm going to give you just a few examples in English, and then we can move over to a mother tongue. If you said, for example, the word animal in the English language, uh, if you don't want to use the word animal, you can use uh, you can use a synonym. Uh, uh, beast, for example, refers to an animal, okay? If you are biologically inclined, in the, you know, by biological sciences, you may, be, you may be referring to a beast as a mammal, okay? So these are just examples. If you said an animal, as somebody says a beast, somebody says uh, uh, a, a, a mammal, you may be referring to the same thing depending on the context, okay? So that's one example in the, uh, in the English language. Now, if you take the word child, for example, the word child, in, in, you know, uh, people refer to child as a kid. Okay, ID, which is which is uh, which is synonymous with the word child. If you want to sound a little bit uh, uppity, you can say offspring. Okay, the word offspring actually refers to a child. So there are many ways of referring to the same to the same uh, to the same word in 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 many languages. And in my mother tongue, we have the same grammatical phenomenon, and that's what I'm going to be discuss discussing today with you uh, with you guys, uh, dear friends. Okay. In my mother tongue, I'm going to select just a few examples, and I'll give you uh, other uh, al alternative meanings of the same word in my mother tongue, okay? If you take the word wife, for example, the word wife in my mother tongue, uh, the my my people will say, um, they will say, uh, Veo, you know, Veo, Veo is, is my wife. So they could say something like, my Veo no, Veo no boo. Which means my wife is a, is a beautiful woman, Vionabu. Now, if you don't want to use, sometimes my people don't want to use the word Vio because it's too simplistic, you know, and it doesn't it doesn't add any particular endearment to the word Vio. Now, if you if you if you like me, you would refer to your wife as Nkwinjio. Okay, Nkwinjio is like literally the mother of my house, you know. So if you listen to somebody from my village say a thing like Nkwinjionabu, and another person says uh, uh, Vionabu, the, the two folks are saying the same thing. The only difference is that one person is referring to his wife in a more in a more respect, respectful way, in a more endearing manner. I hope this makes sense. So Vio and Nkwinjio uh, actually refer to the same to the same uh, to the same thing, which is spouse. Okay. Now, in the, on the you know on the other hand, a woman can refer to her husband as le, you know le. So he can say uh, she can say leono leono uh, burushi. Okay, leono burushi, which means my husband is a policeman. Now, if it, if she didn't want to use the word "leon," she could she could also use a word that is very respectful, like "tienjo," you know, "tienjo no burushi." Okay. Now, if you say the word "tienjo," that literally means the father of my house or the father of my home of my homestead. You know, that's more more respectful. But regardless, dear friends, the word "leon" and the word Chinjio both re refer to the to the to the syllable which is husband in, in the English language. Okay, I'm just giving you some little bit of semantic nuances 
why somebody from my village would use Leo and another person would use uh, uh, Tianjiao, why one person would say Veo and another person would say uh, Quinjiao. Again, like I said, it's just about res being, being a little bit respectful, okay? Now, the other thing that I want to refer to is, uh, the, is the word air, H-E-I-R in, uh, in, in, in the English language. H-E-I-R is the, it refers to the successor, somebody who, if you died, died today and you, you, you left behind uh, somebody to replace you, uh, then that person is called your heir. We have all kinds of heirs on planet, uh, planet of difference. But in my in my village, um, so uh, so somebody would say say for example, uh, you war not war not 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 tea law yeah, okay. Tea law is a more respectful way of saying this man is our is the successor of our father, for example. Now, if, if if you didn't want to go that respectful, you can simply just say uh, "wananju." You know, "wananju" means he's the he's the successor. Okay, but it's 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 not offensive, but it doesn't connote the kind of um, respect that that um, you would get when somebody says "wanati um, lawyer." You know, "ti lot means the head of the compound, so to speak, or the head of the family. Okay. So we have uh, nju, which is the same thing as an heir. And then we have the tielo, which is a little bit of a more dignified way of referring to the same nju, which is the, the heir, okay? And we go to the something that is a little bit, uh, uh, you know, a little bit uh, uh, commonplace, uh, like, you know, the word, the word uh, birth. In my mother tongue, we say uh, bika. Bika. Bika is birth, okay? And you can also refer to bika as mfuva. Mfuva. Mfuva literally is to get, to beget a child. Now, bika means, you know, giving birth. So you can refer to the two, the act of delivery as mfuva and also mbi, okay? Or not be, we are not be. For example, you can say we are not be, which means my my wife has just uh, given birth to a baby. My you know my wife is just the baby has been delivered. You know for my wife, and you can also say we are not fuva. You know <laughs> which literally means my wife has gotten a baby. So uh, be, me be is to give birth, and not me fuva is the same thing as to give birth. Okay. Now we'll go to something that's a little sad, which is death now. Uh, if you have done your you've done your time on earth here and the Lord has called you back to where you you really belong, you, somebody can report it and say, Wonoku. Okay. Wonoku. Ku literally means to kick the bucket, to you know, die. Uh, but my people don't like to use words like that because they're a little bit um uh, um, a little bit harsh, okay. So, ku is literal, straightforward, blank, and harsh. But ndeke, ndeke has a little bit of a, a little bit of a, you know, um, euphemism. It's it, it 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 softens the impact of that hardness of death, which is brutal, okay. So ndeke and uh, ku, they actually refer to the same thing. Uh, now, <laughs> we have to go to the royal family. The royal family, you don't refer to the to the death of the royalty. For example, the the, the, the chief or the fun, uh, uh, you, you, or their mother, for example, the queen, the matriarch. You don't say, you don't say, um, for not cool or for not, uh, uh, for not cool. we don't say that. The ku is for ordinary people, but with the people, the royalty will say, um, bu, bu not fu, but their death is referred to as not ku, but bu, you know, bu not fu, bu not lot makal, bu not fu lot makal. 
Now, the birth is another completely different thing. Now, when he comes out, when he leaves the domain of the, of death, birth can also mean, uh, you know, evil acts and so on and so forth. But birth is, that's the way we refer to the death of a royalty, the death of a matron, the death of a patron, the death of a fun, the death of a, of a chief. So, ku and bu, and also there's a way, another one, ndeko, as I mentioned before. See, ku and ndeko is for ordinary people, ku, death. Ndeko, death, and then for the royalty, you talk about um, bu, okay? I hope that is making sense, dear brothers, uh, dear brothers and, uh, and sisters and good friends over out there. Now, um, if you wanted to say something, you want to refer to somebody as somebody who who talks a lot, somebody who is talkative, you can say, uh, you know, uh, so that's literally, this guy talks a lot. And if you wanted to say it in a more disguised way, you can say chu wo buddha. You know, it's literally it means this this guy's mouth falls a lot. Okay, chu gudambo nto chu gudambo nini, which means his mouth falls a lot. It's literally is a description of how the 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 mouth, the lips of the person is it keeps falling. You know, opening and opening and closing, opening and closing because the person is trying to talk. You know, so uh, to be talkative. My people can say walk put da, which means this man talks a lot. Or they can say true uh, walk guda. True is mouth. True walk guda literally means this guy's mouth falls a lot, which means he 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 exercises his mouth, so to speak. He exercises his mouth a lot. Okay, during the the process of talking. So these, um, as you see, as I'm going, I'm going with concepts. And I'm also going with objects. Now let's talk about another object, the car. The car in my, in my in Gibber, okay, that's my mother tongue. We refer to it in a couple of ways. Uh the people who are people who are not very grounded in my mother in my mother tongue, they will say matu, which literally is a deformation of moto, as you can hear, matu. My people, when they hear words that are not too familiar with which they are not too familiar, they will. They will concoct something that sounds like what they heard. So instead of saying moto, they will say matu. But the real Mukha person, who somebody who grew up in the village and, and was to a school in the art of good speech, will say mbonkyaka. Mbonkyaka is another word, more indigenous, more correct way of saying a car in my, in my village. So mbonkyaka and matu. They will. They both refer to the same to the same uh, object, which is the car. So we are talking here, dear dear friends, today about synonymy in my mother tongue. And I started this discourse by defining what a synonymy means, and I gave you examples in English uh, of synonyms. Okay, we're going to proceed. We still got a, we got a few minutes to go. Uh, the, the another word is the word house. Okay, your house could be referred to. To in your in our mother tongue as njia, okay. Another way to njia means your house. Now another way to refer to the to the same object is fu, okay. So if you say somebody njia no njia, it means that house is my house. If you can say fui no fu, you are saying the same thing. That compound there is my compound. That house you see over there is my is my uh, is my is my house, okay. So we have fu. We have njia, all right, and uh, I believe there are there are other there are other ways or with other more idiomatic ways of expressing the concept of a home, uh, but I think that saying njia and fu, okay, uh, some people say chunjia, okay. If you hear the word njia, you had hear the word uh, fu, and you hear the word uh, so have njia, chunjia, njia, chunjia, and fu. They both, they, those three uh, uh, syllables refer to the same, to the same thing. Okay. I hope I'm not losing anybody yet. This is a, an exciting language, as you can see. Uh, and so I invite you to stay put with me and let's keep going. The word friend is another word that does uh, have made, uh, a couple of ways of referring to it in my mother tongue. Now, friend in my mother tongue, we will say tekenu. Okay. Tikanu. If you say we, uh, we not tikanu, you are saying that man over there is my friend. Okay. If it's a woman, 
you will say, Woke Fili, no Woke, which is that woman over there is Woke, is, uh, is my friend. Now, the women don't say take a no, to the best of my knowledge. They say Woke, for women, they will say Woke, no, no Woke, which means this woman is my friend. Ladies, for men, they will say Woke, Fili, no Tienko, or no take a no. You see, I've used one other synonym here. Instead of saying take a new, you can say tien con, okay? Tien con. And uh, in other contexts, if the friend is really a reliable friend, you can say, you can say take a tour, okay? Take a tour means, um, take a tour actually means a very, very close friend, a very dependable friend, a friend you can, you can count on, okay? So that's it with friends. So for friends, you have take a new, you have tien con, and then if it's a friend with whom you have very close relationship, you, sh you should be saying uh, something like tienko, a tienko, okay? Now, we go to money. That's the, uh, the, the devil's tool. Money, in my mother tongue, would say, we call, we call it kuo, okay? Just like that, kuo. Kuo is money in general. Now, mbeh, you can also say mbeh. Mbeh, why do we say mbeh? Because in those days, we used to use uh, we used to use um, cowries, okay. We use cowries as a a means of exchange. So mbah, I you hear the mbah is actually refers in my mother tongue. The word mbah refers to cowries, but in the in days of old, they used that as money. That's what I'm saying. They used it as a as a medium of exchange. And so even today, if you talk to the older folks in my village, they will still refer to 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 money. Uh, regardless of the nature of cash, bank note, they will still refer to it as mba, okay? So we have here kuo, which is a generic way of saying money, and then we have the more idiomatic way of referring to money as mba, okay? And I've given you the uh, the etymology of the word mba. It referred to calories, okay? I hope you're hanging in there, dear friends. Uh, the, the other thing that I want to say, I, I have uh, three or more things to, to go, uh, to say, and I will let you go. The other one is pride. When somebody is arrogant, um, uh, my people have a couple of ways of referring to him or her. The first word for, for pride is tuguna, which means literally a big, big throat. Okay. If you hear tu, is the throat of the of the Makkah person. Now, if somebody says, what tu, what good thou? He's saying, this man is just too arrogant. Okay. And, um, so too good is one thing. Uh, another way the the Moko person can refer to an arrogant person is you know, if somebody says in my mother tongue, uh, he's literally telling you that this guy is an arrogant person who likes to call attention to himself for whatever reason. Okay. So and too good. Uh, those are the different ways you can re refer to pride or prideful behavior in my mother tongue, okay? Now, I'm going to uh, uh, close with three things that uh, I'm sure that many of you have been uh, uh, have been waiting for. I'm going to talk about a little bit, just a little bit, without being vulgar, about private parts. The woman's private part, that is the vagina, is called bon uh, woke. Uh, 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 if you want to be very, very open, you will say, you will say, kan wuke. Kan wuke is literally like, by, like you hear, I say vagina here. That's what, you know, medical, medically, if you're in, working in a lab or whatever, you're talking about pregnancy, whatever you talk about vagina. So the, my, the, my people will say, kan wuke. but my people, uh, they, my folks don't like to, to sound vulgar and, uh, you know, hurt people's uh, feelings. So they will say, Fangwabi, you know, um, actually, I, I take that back. Fungwabi is for men, okay? They will say boy, bon woke, okay? For women, it will be either a kun woke or it will be boy, which again could be <laughs> could be misinterpreted to be the to refer to the anal part. But that's what my people do in order not to hurt sensibilities. They will not like to pronounce the word kun, uh, which is the word for word interpretation of vagina. They will say boy, which is uh, like the her behind. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so that's a euphemistic. A euphemism is when you soften the the, 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 the shock of a, of a word or of a, of a language, okay? Now, since I spoke about the female uh, private part, 
I want to talk about the uh, the, the male private part too. So the penis is called uh, taco in my in my mother tongue. Okay, uh, taco is a brute, crude way of referring to uh, a men's sexual or sexual organs. Now, if you wanted to sound a little bit refined and a little bit less vulgar, you would say fungwabi, You know, which literally means <laughs> literally means the things of his body. And uh, you, when you say the things of his body, you're actually saying the, the man's penis. You know. Um, so you have for the men, uh, penis is called uh, ntaki, ntawoka, which is the man's penis, or uh, fungwabi, which is just private parts, okay? So, and last but not the least, dear, dear, brothers, dear brothers and dear sisters, good friends, I want to talk about sexual intercourse. Now, my people have all kinds of ways of saying sexual intercourse, all right? The first one I'm going to say is, the, my people would say, um, yanjaka, yanjaka is to have sexual intercourse. Okay, and uh, if you were a man talking, he may say lone, which lone actually means like, like to, um, to yeah, lone is also to have sexual intercourse, but it's very graphic. It's very graphic when somebody says lone okay. It's very graphic. You can picture the action, you know. Uh, so that is a, a very um, a, a, a less refined way of saying, uh, you know, um, I would say having having a sexual intercourse with somebody. Okay, so melone okay and um yanjaka be okay is the same thing as having sexual intercourse. Okay, I hope this was not too sleazy. I uh, I, I had reserved those three those three uh, words at the end because um, I know that uh, that may spice the conversation. Okay, dear friends, I'm going to end here. I'm looking at my uh, my clock is uh, 22 minutes, and I this is a little bit more than what I anticipated, but it's, it's good because it's, uh, it helps us to understand what is the the function of synonymy in my in my mother tongue. So I'm wishing you all the best uh, with your learning of my mother tongue. If you have comments, uh, you can leave it behold below the the video, and uh, if you like it, if you like it, and if you have questions, of course, uh, you should leave the your questions at the bottom of the video. And I, when I get back, I will respond to your questions. I'm wishing you all the best and uh, stay tuned and God bless you. Bye-bye.